Hey, what is going on everybody? It is Rob, AKA the Diligent Dev. And did you know that SpaceX has a public facing API? Well, I didn't know this until a few days ago. And when I checked it out, it's one of the most interesting things I found on the web in a long time. They expose a ton of information. So I was sitting there just kind of browsing through everything and thinking about something that I could do. And I landed on an endpoint that gives you all of their rocket launches since the company was founded by Elon Musk. So I wanted to create something to do with that. And I thought, what better than to create a nice looking timeline using Vue.js and Vue.Defy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop over to the computer, we're gonna check out exactly what we're gonna build, and then we're gonna start coding it. Okay, so here we are over at the computer, and as you can see, we have our timeline up here. We have each launch with the mission name, the rocket that was launched, the details of the mission, and the date of the mission. In this little icon here, we have the mission patch, and if we scroll through all of these, you'll see that there are a ton of them here, and they all look really good, and it's a really, really nice looking timeline. So let's go ahead and start coding this out. Okay, so the first thing I would do is head over to the SpaceX API docs. There's a lot of really interesting information in here, and there's a ton of cool stuff you could do with it. What we're about to do is just the tip of the iceberg, and they're, the sky's the limit when it comes to this information, because they just pretty much hand it all to you. The next thing I would do is go and download a program called Postman, and I'll leave a link to this in the description. And what this allows you to do is test their API endpoints. And the reason that I'm suggesting Postman is because on their API documentation, they have this little button to run in Postman. So when you click that, what it does is, this is Postman, it gives you their API calls in a nice little collection here. So if we go to the launches collection and we do get all launches and we hit send, it shows you all the different properties and information that we're gonna be receiving from their API. Makes it really easy to go through everything and see exactly what we're going to be getting back. So now that we've had some time to look over the documentation and look at how to run different requests in Postman, we're gonna create our view project for our timeline. So go ahead and open up a new terminal. And the first thing we're gonna do is install the view CLI if you don't already have it installed. Now, normally I would just use NPX to create a view project, but the view CLI makes it very, very easy to install Vue.Defy. So we're gonna run npm i-g for global at view slash CLI. And if you're on a Mac, you'll probably have to put sudo in front of this. But if you don't have it installed, go ahead and run this command, pause the video and come back when it is finished. So what I'm going to do is just get rid of this because I already have the view CLI installed. I'm going to CD into my desktop directory. And then I'm going to run the following command view creates SpaceX dash timeline. And then I'm gonna choose the default setting. And once this is done, I will be right back. Now that our project's been created, we can CD into it. We can just copy this line, paste it down here, and CD into the root of the project. And now we're going to add Vue.Defy. So we'll say view, add, Vue.Defy. Then we're gonna choose the default preset. And once this is done installing, I will be right back. So now that Vue.Defy has been added to the project, we just need to install dependencies before we start coding. The first one we're gonna install is Axios, and this is what we're gonna use to make requests to the API. And the second one is Moment, and we're gonna use that to format dates. So you'll run the following command, npm i axios moment. And once this is done installing, I will be right back. And now that our dependencies have been installed, I've gone ahead and opened the project in Visual Studio Code. It is the code editor that I will be using for this. So if you want to follow along, go ahead and download Visual Studio Code and open the project in it. And I'll leave a link to the in the description to Visual Studio Code. Next thing we're gonna do is open up a new terminal and run the following command, npm run serve. And what this is gonna do is launch a development server so that we can see our changes in real time. Now that the development server is up, we can go ahead and click on this. And you'll see we have a boilerplate Vue.Defy project. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and pin it to this side of the screen and pin our code editor to the other side and go ahead and make this a little bit smaller and make this a little bit bigger. The first thing I wanna do is get rid of all of this in here and make our nav bar tailored to our project. So we'll go to source, app.view. I'm gonna go ahead and delete both of these images. We're gonna do an H2 and say SpaceX timeline. Then we're gonna go ahead and delete this V button. And I'll go ahead and close this and make this a little bit smaller. Then we're gonna delete our hello world components, delete the imports, and delete it as a registered components. Then we might as well go to our components folder and delete this hello world component. And now that we have the project all cleaned up, let's go ahead and make our API request to get all the launches. So at the top of the script tag, we're gonna import Axios from Axios. Inside of our data property, we're going to make a variable called launches, and we're gonna set that to an empty array, and it'll hold all the launches that we get from the API. Then below the data property, we'll create a lifecycle hook called created, and we will make this async. And then we're gonna write the following code to get our launches. We'll say const, we'll do some object destructuring, data, equals axios dot get and then let's go ahead and open up postman and this is the api endpoint to get all launches so we'll go ahead and copy this and we're going to paste it in here we'll go ahead and close this down and what we're going to do is await this call and then below that we'll say data dot for each We'll pass in a launch variable and we'll say this.launches.push launch. And then below this, we will say console.log this.launches. And we'll save it. And then we're going to open up our console. And you'll see we have an array with. 107 launches. So now that we know that our launches are coming back successfully through our API call, let's go ahead and just close this out. We're gonna open up our file explorer and then we're going to add a new file under components and call it launch timeline item dot view. We'll create our template tag and our script tag. And the next thing we're gonna do is head over to the Beautify timeline documentation. So you see they have this great timeline that we can use. And if we scroll down a little bit, there's one called avatar dot that is going to be perfect for exactly what we're gonna need. We'll put the mission name here, the rocket underneath here is a subtitle, the mission details in here. We'll put the date over here and we'll put the mission badge right here. So if we go ahead and click this view source, what we can do is just grab this timeline item, we can copy it, and we can head back and just go ahead and paste it in. The next thing we'll do is get rid of this V4 since we're not using it, and I'll hit Alt Shift F to format this. Now, after we've grabbed all of our launches, we'll pass each launch to our timeline card. So inside of the export default, we're gonna make a property called props, and we're gonna pass it in array and launch inside of that array. And then what I'm gonna do is open up Postman and we know that off of our launch prop that we're passing in, we're gonna have all of these properties. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we can use here. The first thing we're gonna see is the mission name. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and we want this to be the headline of the card. So what I'm gonna do is delete this out of here and do some text interpolation and say launch dots and go ahead and pass the mission name in and in front of it just so we know exactly what we're looking at we'll do mission with a colon and then if we scroll down here we see we have the launch date so we're going to take the launch date local 
and you'll see it's not in a great format. So what we're gonna do is format it with moment. So the top of the script tag, we're gonna say import moment from moment. And then inside of our export default, we're gonna make a computed property. And then we're gonna make a function called launch date. And we're gonna return moment, pass in our this dot launch dot launch date local, and then format that and format that as month, day, and year for US formatting. We'll take this launch date and we will come up here. This is going to be opposite of our card. We'll do some text interpolation and we'll pass it our launch date. The next thing we're gonna want is the rocket. So underneath here, I'm going to create a V card subtitle. We're going to say rockets, do some text interpolation. We'll say launch and then let's look for the rocket. We'll see we have a property of rocket. So we'll say dot rocket. And inside of this, we have another object and the rocket name. The next thing we're gonna wanna do is get rid of this description here and pass the details of the launch. So we'll do some text interpolation. We'll say launch and let's go see if we can find the details inside of Postman. So we see we have a details property. So we'll just say launch.details. And the last thing we're gonna to wanna to do is get rid of this image and display the mission patch. So we'll see inside of this links object, we have a mission patch small property with a, an image. So we're gonna go ahead and copy that, come up here and do some binding. And then we're gonna say launch dot mission patch small. And we're gonna go ahead and save this. We're gonna head back to our app.view. And then at the top here, underneath our Axios import, we're going to import launch timeline item from dot forward slash components slash launch timeline item. We'll go ahead and register this as a components. Inside of our V content, we'll put a V container to give it some padding. And then we'll head back to our Vutify documentation. And we see in our timeline component, our timeline items are housed inside of a V timeline. So we're gonna say V timeline. And then we'll add our launch timeline item. And go ahead and self close that. And it looks like I've misspelled down here. So we'll go ahead and fix that. On our V timeline, we'll say V if launches dot length is greater than zero. And then inside of our V timeline, we'll do a V4. We'll say launch in launches. We'll give it a key equal to launch dot and we'll find a nice key to use. We'll say flight number. And then we'll pass it a property of launch and set that equal to launch. And we'll go ahead and save this. And we will open. And it looks like everything's coming through correctly except for our mission patch. So let's look at our properties here. Go back to our launch timeline. We see we have launch.missionpatch small. And the reason this isn't coming through is because it was inside of a links object. So we'll say launch.links.missionpatch small. We'll go ahead and save this. And we will come back and we see we have our nice timeline. So I'll make this full screen. We'll see we have our mission, our rocket, and the description of what happened and our patch for the mission. So everything is looking really good inside of here.
And that's gonna go ahead and wrap up this tutorial. But there's a lot more you can do with this API. This is just one small example. But if you got any value out of this, please smash that like and subscribe button. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about this video, you can drop a comment in the comment section below. And until next time, happy coding.